اشد اللہ واہدہ لا شریق له و اشد النا محمد ابد و رسول اما بعد و فاؤز باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم قال اللہ تعالی فی القرآن الحکیم ذال کا عالم الغیب و شہادت العزیز الرحیم العزی آسانہ کل شین خلقہ ہو و بدل خلق الانسان من تین سما جالا نسل ہو من سلالت میں مائم مہین سما سوا ہو و نفخی و نفخفی ہے من روحی ہی و جعالا لکم السما و لبسار و لفیدہ قلیل ما تشکرون صدق اللہ العظیم the verse which I've recited or the verses I should say that I've recited translate as follows that Allah is he who made beautiful everything which he created and he began the creation of man or human beings from dust then he made his progeny his descendants that means his progeny of an extract of worthless looking water then he made him complete and breathed into him of his spirit his here means allah's spirit of his spirit and he gave you ears and eyes and hearts but you give very little thanks that is chapter 32 surah as-sajda verses 9 to 7 and the holy quran also says huwa allazi khalaqakum fa minkum kafirun wa minkum mu'min wallahu bima ta'maluna basir khalaqa as-samawati wal arza bil haqqi wa sawwarakum fa ahsana sawwarakum wa ilayhi al-maseer sadaq allahu lazim and those two verses which i have now recited translate as follows he it is that is to say allah he it is who created you but one of you is a disbeliever a kafir and one of you is a believer a mu'min and allah is seer of what you do he created the heavens and the earth with truth and he shaped you and he made goodly your shapes and to him is the destination chapter 64 surah at-taghabu at-taghabun verses 2 to 3 recently in a general discussion forum on the internet a muslim raised the question which to quote his own words was this why has allah created unbelievers he said that he had asked his fellow muslims this question and he could not obtain any answer from anyone so he was now asking the same question more widely than just to muslims in response i would say that allah has not created unbelievers in the sense that allah actually acted to make anyone an unbeliever according to the quran allah created every human as a human being in the same way and in the first quotation from the holy quran which i recited the first verse of that quotation tells us that everything which god created was made beautiful by him allazi asana kulla shayan khalaqahu that he made beautiful asan everything which he created and then he created human beings now that quotation then also goes on to say that allah began the creation of mankind from dust mintin from dust 
in science there is something called cosmic dust cosmic dust consists of dust particles which are found all over space all over the universe quite abundantly and this dust also enters the earth's atmosphere it comes down to the ground and it settles in various places on earth there is an article on nasa's website the american space agency nasa's website and the title of the article is the cosmic dust in your bones nasa's web telescope will investigate the intertwined origins of dust and life that is the title of the article and notice in the article the words dust and life the origins of dust and life and within the article it says at at a certain point cosmic dust is essential to the function of the universe it becomes part of planets and can contain the organic compounds that lead to life as we know it dust led to us this is the last sentence in that quotation dust led to us in other words led to human beings coming into existence so it is scientifically accepted now that dust is the origin of human life and in that first quotation which i read the next verse says that man's progeny in other words descendants of human beings they are created from what it calls an extract of worthless seeming water and these words worthless seem worthless seeming water these refer to the emission which comes from the male which then enters the female body and impregnates it and to the human eye that little bit of liquid looks worthless but in that quotation the next verse says that from that worthless looking water god makes a complete human being then he breathes his own spirit into that human being and gives that human being the senses of hearing seeing and thinking and this is the case with every human being whether he is going to grow up to be a believer or an unbeliever the spirit of god has been breathed into him he has a link with god through that spirit and if he exercises his power of his power of acquiring knowledge by using his hearing and seeing and then if he uses his power of understanding to analyze that knowledge then he can recognize and believe in god and as i quoted that the translation of that first quotation at the end it says you give very little thanks you human beings give very little thanks for these senses which allah has given you and this indicates that humans in general do not appreciate the value of these senses and it is through that failure that unbelief failure to use those senses that unbelief arises and unbelief does not only mean that a person does not believe in the religion of islam it also refers to it also refers to a muslim not acting on what he believes and considers to be teachings revealed by god i then recited the second quotation which addresses all mankind and allah says to all mankind that he it is who created you but one of you is a disbeliever and one of you is a believer and it also goes on to say that 
God has shaped humans in the best way. Whether they go on to become believers, momin or unbelievers, kafir. In another place, the Holy Quran says, and I quote that in translation, surely we have created humans from sperm mixed. Mixed means mixed with ovum in the female. In order to try him, in other words, in order to test him, and we have made him hearing and seeing. We made a human being who can hear and see. We have truly shown him the way. Allah says we have truly shown human beings the way. And it is up to him that he may be thankful or unthankful. Chapter 76 verses 2 to 3. This declares that every human life is conceived from the same constituents of the male and female parents and the, person, the, the purpose of human life is for a person to be tested as to what he does during his life. He has been granted the senses of receiving information through hearing and seeing through his ears and his eyes then God has shown him the right path and left it up to him to be thankful for this and accept the right path or not be thankful for it and not accept that path. And further we are also, we are also told in the Holy Quran that when Allah causes people to be born what it calls the descendants of Adam. He made them bear witness at birth about themselves, saying to them, Am I not your Lord? And they said, Yes, we bear witness. So Allah then says to them, This is in case you say on the day of judgment that we were unaware of this. Or you should say, that it was because our fathers worshipped things other than Allah and we are, are their descendants. That is why we also worship those other gods. This is chapter 7 verses 172 to 173. And according to what is stated here in the Holy Quran, the human soul is made to recognize at its very birth that there is a God who created him and he is the one and only God. Now it is obvious that the message of Islam does not reach all non-Muslims in the world. And many non-Muslims who do hear something about Islam, they receive a very distorted picture of it, which is such a bad image that no decent moral human being would accept it. So Allah says in the Quran that he has created every soul with an inner, real, an inner realization inside it that he is their Lord. And on the day of judgment, no one can put forward the excuse, the excuse for their unbelief or their wrong deeds that they were unaware of what the true religion was or they cannot put forward this excuse that they only followed their forefathers in doing what the forefathers did so they are free of responsibility for doing what they did. Just saying we didn't know we were doing wrong or we learnt it from our forefathers, we learnt it from our culture and society that will not be fully accepted as a valid reason to excuse you by Allah. And in fact, in this world also, such reasons are not accepted by the courts of law of this world when someone is charged with some crime. Allah is much more merciful than the courts of this world. 
and he does take our weaknesses into account. The Holy Quran says several times, Allah does not impose on any soul a duty which is beyond its ability, which is beyond its capacity to carry out. And the Holy Quran says something like 10 times, it repeats, that Allah does not deal with anyone unjustly in the least, in the least. However, when human beings fail to use their God-given sense and reason, or they reject the truth due to prejudice and bias, then they are accountable before Allah. Every human being has a sense of right and wrong, whatever their religion may be, whether even they believe in God or not. They have a sense of right and wrong, regardless of whether the message of Islam has reached them or not. Every human being knows what is just and what is unjust. And it is by that standard, which is within every human being, that God will judge them. To go back to the original question, unbelievers exist in this world because Allah has given human beings the choice whether to accept or reject his message. And this is stated in one of the quotations I read above where it says, Allah says, we have truly shown him the way. He may be thankful or unthankful. And this choice is also repeated in many other places in, in the Holy Quran. For example, there is that well-known verse of the Quran, there is no compulsion in religion, the right way is indeed clearly distinct from error. And somewhere else the Holy Quran says, the truth is from your Lord, so whoever wishes, let him believe. And whoever wishes, let him reject it, let him disbelieve. Chapter 18, verse 29. And another example is this quotation. Surely this Quran is a reminder. So whoever wishes, whoever wishes, may take a way to his Lord. Chapter 73, verse 19. It is also made clear in the Quran that Allah allows different religions to exist. That is a part of how this world is and how Allah wants this world to be. This is a verse which I've already explained in a recent khutbah, but I'll repeat it here. That verse says, Allah says to human beings, for every one of you, in other words, for every nation, we appointed a law and a way. And if Allah had pleased, he would have made all of you one single nation. But he did this so that he may test you in the teachings which he gave you. So try to excel one another in good deeds. To Allah you will all return and then he will inform you about your differences. In other words, who was right and who was wrong in their beliefs. Allah will inform them. This is chapter 5, verse 48. And in another place, Allah says to the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, And if your Lord had pleased, all those who are in the earth would have believed. All of them. So are you going to force people until they become believers? Chapter 10, verse 99. So that is the will of Allah, that not everyone can be a believer and those who are not believers can't be forced by anyone to become believers. And also according to the Holy Quran, unbelievers of all kinds, whether they are Jews, Christians, Hindus, anyone else, atheists, 
all of the idol worshippers, all of them will continue to exist until the day of judgment. Now, if the Muslim who asked this question, why has Allah created unbelievers? If he is so concerned that there are unbelievers in this world, then he should try taking the message of Islam to as many of them as he can. And this is a repeated command of Allah to the Holy Prophet Wasallam. Allah says to him, O Messenger, O Rasul, deliver what has been revealed to you from your Lord. And if you do not, then you have not delivered his message. Chapter 5 verse 67. So Allah has given you the tools to spread his message, but he has also comforted you by saying that if you don't achieve any results by your efforts to spread Islam, then remember that your duty is only to deliver the message. These words are repeated in the Holy Quran a number of times. Your duty is only to deliver the message. And there is a further point to remember that this Muslim question is, is sad that why has Allah created unbelievers? Why are there unbelievers in this world? But I would say that in many cases it is Muslims themselves who create unbelievers out of Muslims. There are a large number of people in this world who consider themselves as Muslims, but they have been declared as unbelievers and kafir by other Muslims. So it is in your hands to stop this practice so that you yourself do not increase the number of unbelievers in the world. So now I'll summarize what I've been uh, saying in this uh, Khutbah. Allah has not created anyone to be an unbeliever. Allah has only created human beings and he has created each of them in the same way. In fact, he has created each of them in the best shape and form and having a pure nature pure nature which corresponds to Allah's own nature. And Allah has planted into every soul a reminder of their creator. And then Allah has also revealed guidance for humanity through his prophets and given everyone the choice whether to follow that guidance or not. And he has ordered those who accept his guidance to deliver that guidance to other people as well. And as regards those people in the world who do not have the opportunity of receiving that guidance or who didn't really have a fair chance whether to accept that guidance or to reject it, they didn't get that chance. Allah has still given them a natural guidance within themselves, within their souls, and they are then judged by Allah according to that. And in the end I would say that the fact that unbelievers exist in the world should be considered by Muslims as a spiritual and intellectual challenge. And that challenge is for us can we answer their questions and their criticism of Islam satisfactorily? Can we take the message of Islam to them? Can we prove ourselves as Muslims to be better behaved and more useful human beings than they are? So that may well be why unbelievers exist in this world 
to provide us, to provide Muslims with these challenges. So may Allah enable us to take up these challenges and to benefit our fellow human beings by doing that, by taking up those challenges. Amen. بارك الله لنا ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعنا وإياكم بالآيات والذكر الحكيم إنه تعالى جواد كريم بلكم برو روف رحيم